I'm the program director at the Native Arts and Cultures Foundation. We are the first permanently endowed National Native Arts Foundation. So why I'm here today is to talk about a local initiative. It's the first regional kind of offering of the NACF Artist Fellowship Program. We'll be offering this for at least two years in uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, North Dakota, and South Dakota. We have enough right now to make up to six awards, and the awards will be up to $20,000. We'll be offering this particular opportunity in two different disciplines, visual art and traditional art. And there's kind of a breakdown here um, on the screen of what we mean by traditional and visual. In terms of the visual, it's pretty much anything. Um, except for design, except for film, unless it's video as it pertains to an installation piece. And in terms of traditional art, it is the 2 and 3D um, practices within traditional art, pottery, weaving, um, regalia making, beadwork. The opportunity is, again, very specific to a region. The artists have to live in one of these four states. We're asking that the applicants be from tribes within this four state region. There's a list of tribes that you can find on the website to walk you through and ask you how you qualify then. And if you don't, um, that's okay. Um, you can come back again when we offer the National Fellowship. Um, and the reason for that is because we're asking that the artists will share their work with the local community. And we feel that bringing the work outside of a studio practice and into the community creates a more um, vibrant community and an understanding of the artist's practice. In terms of tribal affiliation, you'll have to provide some of the usual documentation, um, certificate of Indian blood or a tribal enrollment card. We also know that identity is a very sensitive issue, so we look at it at a, on a case-by-case -case basis. Some people are able to provide other forms of um, documentation, whether it be letters or... Um, we had a Native Hawaiian woman who wasn't born in Hawaii, so it didn't say Native Hawaiian on her birth certificate. She was living in Germany, but her sisters did, so her sister sent her birth certificate, and we accepted that. So there, it just kind of depends on the situation. And then if you don't have this information, please contact your, um, your tribal agency about how to uh, acquire any of that. So all the applications will be submitted online. That means all of the documents will have to exist electronically on your computer and then be uploaded into the application. We'll provide technical assistance, of course. So give us a call as we have people on the other end that can walk you through any of the steps, including how to reformat your photos. Or if you have questions about what does an artist statement mean or what does a good one look like, we'll also um, have a, 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 a document that has a bunch of suggestions and um, other places where you can go to a website and learn how to format um, uh, your film or a DVD and put it onto YouTube or what have you. These are the things that we're asking for in the application. Of course, the usual contact information and that tribal affiliation documentation that we talked about earlier. Um, but the most important pieces are that ask that you answer um, four different questions that will be um, part of the narrative, um, the artist statement, the resume, work samples, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a few minutes, and then a budget. Um, the budget will have a template for you online, and we ask that you use that template. So let's talk about the narrative a bit. Um, again, four questions. The first question will just ask you to describe your project. We're looking at ways that the fellowship will allow or provide an opportunity for you to explore something new, whether that be something completely new thematically, a new technique, or just something that you haven't had the time or the resources to do in the past. So we'll also ask you in the second piece of this to describe um, how the fellowship will affect your work in the next year. It helps us to understand that impact 
And then, like I mentioned before, we'll ask you to share your work with the community in some way. It doesn't have to be this huge community engagement project. It can be as simple as uh, an exhibit, um, a presentation somewhere in your community. It can be as formal as a um, presentation or a lecture. Um, it could also be sharing the kind of work that you do with your community by providing workshops and teaching other people. Just in some way to bring your work out of your home or wherever you do your work and bring it into the community. And then lastly, um, because we want an, an artist to not only grow create, creatively through this fellowship, but also to pursue it outside of, um, outside of their home or their studio in some way. So that could include um, any number of professional development opportunities. Um, you can travel. And some of the suggestions or examples about what that might include are um, maybe a First Peoples Fund training, attending a conference, doing an internship or an apprenticeship, another artist or in an institution, working with somebody in your community who has some knowledge that you don't have. You can take a class if you want. So that's it for the narrative. So next I want to talk about work samples. Um, the work samples are going to be the bread and butter of your application. You might be able to talk about your work or describe a project, which we encourage you um, to, to do well. But without good examples of the kind of work that you do that demonstrate the quality of your work, we'll have no way of really understanding what your practice looks like. In order for us to understand that you have to have at least five different images, up to 20 images, in terms of what those images look like, um, if you don't have your work with you, call your, call your patrons or your, um, whoever purchased your work and ask if they'll take a picture of it for you or go to them and take a picture of it. It does require that you have a digital camera, probably borrow one somewhere. You might even use your telephone. You can get pretty high resolution, enough resolution to do your submission. New work um, kind of presents better, generally. I would suggest, too, that you focus on one particular area of your practice if you're doing a lot of things. So, um, you know, you, we've talked about, you know, artists, and including myself, that work in a number of different mediums. But in terms of your project description and what you want to work on, then um, show us some work samples of what that might look like. So if you're thinking about doing a weaving, show us the weaving that you do. Um, think that panels respond better too when they can make that correlation and then it doesn't appear like, um, like it's too scattered. These are not required, but you can also submit video samples of your work. Maybe you have somebody or yourself that's come through and just film some of your work or has done an interview with you. This kind of moves into a Kickstarter format where people are applying in different ways and using video and new technology. It helps to actually create a more kind of personable experience for the panel. They can get to know you a little bit. If you have that opportunity, I would encourage you to do that. Again, it's not a requirement. Neither are the, um, any websites that you might have, whether it be your own personal website. It could be a Facebook site. A place like a gallery like this that might have your work. There's a lot of well-known artists that don't have their own website. And then too, if you've been described in the, um, in the media in any way, somebody's written an article about you, you can put that link in there too. Up to three. And then the supplemental material, um, any catalogs that you've been included in or brochures, if you need help, um, we can walk you through what that means to turn a piece of paper into a, um, into a PDF. So that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it. You can go, you can sign in, um, you don't have to put anything up, you can come back to it as long as you remember your, um, your, the email that we use, so we suggest that you use an email that's very common for you. Um, and then even if you forget your password, you can redo it again. Um, you can upload one thing and come back, or you can, you know, until you're done, and then, um, and then you can submit whenever you're ready. The deadline is Thursday, July 10th, so you have plenty of time between now and then to get your work in. I would suggest that you go to the website as soon as you can and just take a look at what the requirements are and what it's going to take for you to 
upload all of your materials, try to get it done as soon as you can or before the deadlines. But as we approach the deadline, you know, the system can get bogged down. Uh, we can't accept any late applications. Um, it's just not fair to the rest of the folks that got it in on time. So back to the timeline, when the applications um, are all submitted at the deadline, we take a look at the application for completeness and then we send them to a peer panel who are experts in the field, we'll review them. Um, that'll happen here in Minneapolis on August 19th and 20th. If you have questions about what happened at the review process, um, just send us a note or give us a call and I can provide some of that feedback for you. We see that as also a professional development piece where you'll learn maybe to improve your application in the future and then submit um, improved applications wherever you apply, including back to us. So those panels make a recommendation to NECF. We, um, we consider those based on gender balance, um, regional or geographic balance, tribal balance, and then we take that, our, our own kind of uh, vetting process, and make a recommendation to the board. Uh, the notifications uh, regarding the board's decision will go out. Um, we develop contracts with the artists and all the promotional materials. The recipients will have a, um, a strong place on our website will be um, featured in our newsletters throughout the year and we'll promote your work in any which way that we can, whether it be a special event that you're, um, that you're involved in or an ex exhibition or whatever it is. Um, we'll announce that in our social media, maybe try to line up a big event for you in the newsletter. I want to say too that when an artist applies to us, you become part of um, NACF in its own way, whether you take the award or not. Um, we hope that it's a learning experience for you. We want to always continue your work, or want to always encourage you in your work. You have a very important place in the greater ecology of Native arts. And beyond the scope of the year that the, um, that the award represents, we'll um, continue to promote their work. We'll find connections for them. And when appropriate, we find places for them to present their work um, and on national stages, um, international stages, we're hoping that the fellowships can provide a platform for them to present their work to the great public. Our voices are important, and so uh, we feel that Native artists have a, um, a significant, make a significant <coughs> contribution to the rest of the arts dialogue to talk about what's affecting our communities, that often they are the most significant voice in our communities, often the most creative voices, and often the most entertaining. In November, we'll make that public announcement of who the recipients are, and again, we'll notify all of the applicants. Um, and then the artists will have a year from November 3rd to October 30th to complete their work. Again, the deadline is Thursday, July 10th, 2014, 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Well, I want to again say thank you guys.